right, guys, so let's look at these uh, margin of error problems for mean land. Now, this will be the one time that I'm going to have us use the Z-star confidence uh, critical value for these problems, and it's only because it's that much more cumbersome when you're trying to do it in on the t-distribution. So just for ease, believe it or not, we're going to use this, this z-star critical value here. And technically, if you had a z-star here, you should have a sigma here. And I, I say technically because that's how these two get mapped out. This should be sigma, but it's just in the real world, we usually don't have sigma, we have s. So okay, no problem. So as mentioned before, when dealing with a large sample size, statisticians take the liberty of using Z-star critical values. We will use this concept when we take a look at margins of errors for means, okay? So that's the only time we're gonna use Z-star critical values. So we're gonna do this the long algebraic way, and then like I did for proportion land, I'll just show you how you can kind of plug it into a formula when you're done. All right, so as I read through this, listen for what land are we in? Right, so the heights in inches of students on campus are assumed to have a normal distribution with a variance of 25 inches. Suppose that we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu and have it accurate to within two inches. The minimum sample size required is, all right, so let, let's see. As I look through this, there are a bunch of things that, that pop out to me. So first off, I see mean, right? I see mu, right? So population mean mu, that's one thing. I, I, I see the phrase, I, normal distribution popped out to me, okay? I also see heights and in inches. As soon as I saw heights and in inches, I knew that I had a numerical variable, so I knew I was in mean land, right? I had units, again, I knew I was in mean land. The other thing I saw that was interesting was variance of 25 inches. Now, it's been a little while since we've dealt with variance. We picked that vocab term up in chapter two, but if you remember, and I'll just put it here, variance is S squared, all right? So if we've got a variance of 25 inches, then the sample standard deviation is actually five inches. So that's why I put it in italics. All right, so here we're gonna go mean land. Because I'm going backwards, because I'm doing a margin of error problem, this will be the one time I use the Z star confidence interval. And I only have the one sample because they're asking me what is the minimum sample size. So I'm gonna use this formula, okay? I want the margin of error to be within two inches. That's what they told me the margin of error was. So I'm gonna say Z star times S over square root N has to be less than or equal to two, all right? less than or equal to two inches. I want a margin of error, just make sure I'm accurate within two inches. So here we go. If I am going 95%, I know that the Z star critical value is 1.96. I know the sample standard deviation is five. I'm gonna leave the square root of N as is because that's what I'm solving for and I want this to be less than or equal to two. Okay, so let's go through the mechanics of how to solve for this. And then I'm just gonna show you a, formula, a formulaic way to do this. All right, so we, we did this back in proportion land. Um, the first thing I would do personally is I would divide by 1.96 here. Some of you might wanna square everything. That's fine, you could also square everything, but I'm gonna isolate this radical before I square everything. So I'm gonna go divide by 1.96, divide by 1.96. So I have five over the square root of n is gonna be equal, less than or equal to two over 1.96. All right, and I'm gonna scooch this up just so we can get all of my algebra in one view screen. And similarly, we saw this in proportion land, but the same thing happens in mean land. You wanna float that decimal as long as possible. So if you do two point, divided by 1.96 on your calculator now, and you round that number, it's gonna, just produce such a large error in terms of decimal round off at the end that it, it could change your answer. So I'm gonna leave this as is for as long as I possibly can. Okay, so then, oh, I put my pencil there. It looks like I had two decimals. So you have a couple of options now. You could square all sides, which maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll square both sides first. So I could square both sides or you could multiply both sides by the square root of n to get that out of the denominator. But why don't I go ahead and just square both sides now? So when I square both sides here, I'm gonna get 25 over n because five squared is 25 and the square root of n squared is n. 
And I'm just gonna leave this as two over 1.96 quantity squared, okay? That kind of looks like a zero. Let me make that a six. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to get that n out of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by n here. Okay. And when I do that, these are going to cancel, which is great. So I have 25 is less than or equal to 2 over 1.96 squared times n. And again, for me personally, I like it when my variable is on the left side of the inequality. I, it's just typically where I put them. So I'm going to switch spots here. And when I switch spots, I also need to switch the direction of this inequality. So I, I will have 2 over 1.96 squared times n is greater than or equal to 25. Okay. So when you reverse the the inequality when you write this quantity that was on the right side now you write it on the left side and you take the quantity that was on the left side but write it on the right side you've got to change the direction of the inequality all right so even though this looks weird it's just a number so i'm going to divide both sides by 2 over 1.96 squared and then you can see i've solved for n so n has to be greater than or equal to whatever this number is so i've got 25 and in the denominator, I have 2 over 1.96 squared. So let's see what that is, and then I will match it up with my multiple choice answer. So I'm going to be real careful here with my denominators. So I'm going to do the denominator first. So I'll do 2 divided by 1.96. Okay. I'm going to square it. All right. And then I want to do 25 divided by that number. All right, and when I do 25 divided my, by my answer, and if you don't remember answer, it's second and then the negative key. Let me just move this so you can see it. The word ANS is over the negative key, so I can always call up my answer. Um, when I get that, it looks like I'm rocking 24.01. So I'm going to get N is greater than or equal to 24.01. And the thing is, you have to have greater than or equal to 24.01 students in order to get two inches uh, within two inches of uh, of your population mean and we're talking about students here right that's got to be a whole number you can't survey 24.01 students you need to survey a whole number so that means I need at least 25 students okay so that is the answer we're looking for there okay actually I'm gonna put this down here just so I have a little space to show you the the formula and here, let me rewrite this and say that implies n has to equal 25 students. Okay, and some of us tend to not like all that algebra. I mean, I personally do, but duh, I'm a math teacher, so I dig all of that stuff. So I want to just show you the formulaic way to do this. You can also, once you see that you have a margin of error problem and you're in mainland, you can say this, n has to be greater than or equal to s squared times z star, I'll just put z for right now because it's there's already going to be a superscript, times z squared divided by your margin of error squared. Okay, so let me let me write that just a little better. I don't like my z, um, so let me do this. So times, all right, z squared, and I'm going to put moe I'm just more comfortable with that. Again, your book uses ME for margin of error. All right, so how this would work is I would say N has to be greater than or equal to 5 squared. We know the z star critical value is 1.96 squared, and I'm going to divide that by my margin of error, which was 2 squared. All right, so just plug in your numbers for your particular problem. And as we do this, all right, let's try this. This would be 5 squared times 1.96 squared divided by 2 squared. What do you know? 24.01. So n still has to be greater than or equal to 24.01, which means n has to equal 25 students. All right, so I have a feeling most of you are gonna like this formula. I don't even blame you. All right, but for those who like the algebra, right? You're getting a little bored on a Friday night, just go through it, it's a good time. All right, so with that, Let's try um, just an extension of this problem and, and see what would happen, okay? And, and I'll use the formula on this one, just so we have that um, under our belts. 
Okay, so it says, what if in the previous example, let me move that up, what if in the previous example, we wanted their margin of error to be within half an inch? How would that change the sample size? All right, so if you want a smaller margin of error, you're gonna have to increase your sample size, right? Increasing sample size reduces variability, and that's exactly what we wanna do. We wanna reduce our variability from two inches to half an inch. So right out the gate, I know 25 can't be the answer. All right, I, I don't know how much larger I need to go. That's what this formula is gonna help me with, but I, it's definitely not 25. So n has to be greater than or equal to s squared times z squared divided by the margin of error squared. So let's see what these numbers are. So in this case, n has to be greater than or equal to, all right, s was five squared, z was still 1.96 squared, the margin of error this time was half an inch. So be careful here. We're gonna put 0.5, or you can put the fraction one half, but I wanna square one half, yeah? So let's see what we've got here. So I'm gonna now, oops, change this a little. I'll put 0.5 in here, square it, and it looks like n has to be greater than or equal to 384.16. but we're still running up on that problem where it's gotta be a whole number. So N has to be equal to 385 students. Okay. All right, so there's your backwards problems or what I call the backwards problems with margins of error. Um, what we're gonna do on the next page is we're gonna really try and solidify what that confidence level um, is referring to. I know we had a couple of multiple choice questions on it and we've talked about it a little bit, but I feel like it's such a vague concept that I wanna talk about it a little more. And I'm gonna show you two applets that hopefully will help solidify those ideas. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.